Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss similarity transformations within the Euclidean group and perhaps some of the Euclidean group's subgroups. We recall that a Euclidean transformation takes a vector x, rotates it using this 3 by 3 matrix R, and then shifts it by another vector v, where this is the so-called Zeitz notation. And if you're not familiar with that notation, you can see it more explained more thoroughly in this video here. We are now going to investigate another Euclidean transformation, lambda, which consists of the rotation u followed by the shift vector s. For this given lambda, the inverse operation, lambda to the minus 1, is going to be the rotation u to the minus 1, it's inverse, and then the shift is going to be minus u to the minus 1 on the vector s. We can find a Euclidean transformation that is similar to r slash v, which we're here going to call r prime v prime, And we do it by first applying the inverse of lambda, and then afterwards we apply the operation lambda. Notice the similarity, pun intended, between this type of representation for a similarity transformation and one that we would use if we were simply concerned with three by three matrices. So in a very similar form, we have that R prime V prime is similar to R V. Then in the next line, we've simply written down the explicit forms for lambda to the minus 1, which is u to the minus 1 minus u to the minus 1 s. We have our r slash v in the center, followed by the lambda operator, which is u slash s. So let us find the result of the second two operators, r slash v and u slash s, and we use the result that we found in the Zeitz notation video, that the result is going to be r times u slash then rs minus the vector v. So now we've simplified it. Instead of a product of three transformations, it is now the product of two transformations. Again, applying our previous results, we see that if we have u to the minus 1 minus u to the minus 1s, on ru slash rs minus v, that the operator part, the matrix part, becomes u to the minus 1 ru, which will look very, very familiar if you are used to similarity transformations with matrices. And then the vector part is going to be the complicated expression u to the minus 1 of rs minus v minus u to the minus 1 of s. So now, to find the result of the similarity transformation, we set the parts of the Zeitz expression equal to each other. So the part, the rotational part, r prime, is equal to the part to the left of the vertical line here. So that tells us that r prime is equal to u to the minus 1 r times u, which is exactly the result we would expect if we were simply dealing with 3 by 3 matrices without any uh, shifts of the coordinate system. Now setting equal the right-hand sides of the Zeitz expression, we get that the transformed shift vector v prime is equal to this expression here. So that's u to the minus 1 of the quantity rs minus v minus u to the minus 1 of s. For the sake of clarity and the succeeding steps, we've simply rewritten our expression for the, uh, the similar shift v prime up here. And we're going to see if we can make this very complicated expression less complicated. So 
the presence of the inverse of u on the right hand side suggests that it might be profitable to apply the u operation to each side. And here we show the application of the u operation to each side. And now we will simplify it. The left hand side is straightforward. For the right hand side, we use the distributive law to distribute the uh, u rotation over the term inside the brackets. And we get u inverse of u times rs minus v minus u inverse of u of s. And now we're going to use the fact that u times the inverse of u by the definition of the inverse is simply the identity operation. This gives us that u v prime is equal to r s minus v minus s. Now we're going to just make a minor rearrangement on the right hand side. This gives us r s minus s minus v which suggests that we can factor out the vector s from this expression. As a result, we get the useful expression that u v prime equals s r minus z minus v. So this is a relationship between the original shift and the transform shift, its similar shift. The usefulness of this expression will be clear somewhat later. But now let's just look at the circumstance where this operation u is simply the identity. So let's look at the case where uh, there is essentially no rotation and we just have a pure shift. So in the case for a pure shift, u becomes the identity and then we get, we get that the transform shift v prime is equal to s, the quantity r minus e minus v. Why do we want such an expression? Well, we will end up with a circumstance where we have two different space groups, or at least two different, two space groups which appear to be different. And we were looking for a condition to show that if we merely shift the coordinate system, that the two uh, space groups will be shown to be identical. So the real utility of this expression will have to wait uh, a little bit to some further videos where we will show an algebraic method to derive all 230 of the space groups. One of the great difficulties in doing so is not finding all the groups, but essentially finding too many. So we want to be able to show when what may appear at first glance to be two different space groups are identical. And this particular equation will have great utility in that process. I thank you very much for your attention. As always, have a good one.